After spending time at the tea farm here, we were wondering knowing fully well that there is no national grid or electricity that comes to this area. We were wondering how do they get electricity to run their factory? This question brought us to a place where we're told they generate electricity that is being used to run their factory. This is a small mini hydropower station located here in Kakara. What did he say? Okay. This, no, this is where they produce the electricity. This water that is flowing is just the waste product. This is the water coming out of Let me see what, what it is. a young man who runs who was on duty who runs the factory he took us around after asking questions whether we got permission from the head office to come there but when he saw us with some of the uh, people that came with us from the tea farm he kind of relaxed and then told us about the factory and he answered some of our questions i am glad to know that these people did not fold their hands waiting for the national grid to come, they decided to take the bull by the horn and generate their own electricity because if they had decided to go with, say, running a generator, the cost would be enormous because they have to think of wear and tear, they have to think of diesel, which is like way too expensive now in the country. I mean, it is fantastic to know that they run this mini hydropower station that generates 400 megawatts of electricity continuously 24 hours a day 365 days of the year and it's run and it's running every single day let me ask you does it does it run all year round every time it's running or do you stop 24 hours 24 hours yes. since 2015 that it was installed it's running every yes. day it's running every day 24 hours wow right. this electricity which community does it supply Supply only the company. Only the company, okay. Yes, yes. Okay. Does it extend to the community around here? No. No, only the company. Only the company. Oh, okay. Yes. And say this thing can produce how many power, how many mega, how many watts? Watts. Four four hundred. Only two hundred kilowatts. Okay. Four hundred kilowatts. So guys, um, this dam you seen here, this dam right here is the dam that supplies water to the tea farm it supplies water to the tea farm then again it also supply water to the turbine that we showed what it does is that the, the water gathers here it goes to the turbine generate 400 uh, megawatts of electricity which is being used by the factory you know so they don't rely on generators or anything so this is what they use to generate their own electricity and um, I, and I think the water actually is being recycled because the volume of water that goes out there, I think it has been recycled back into the dam and so they have electricity 24 hours a day, 365 days of the week. The guys told us today that since they've uh, installed this thing in 2000, was it 2005 or something, I'll look for the, um, the information that was somewhere here, that since they've done that, the electricity has never gone off once, you know. And here's the thing I think, a lot of places or a lot of uh, uh, places in this country have water like this or rivers that flow that can be converted into electricity. But guess what? Nothing is ever done. It's being abandoned. Even there is one right now in this, 
in this state that we learned is supposed to generate over how many thousand megawatt of electric megawatts of electricity that the government started and the project was abandoned we were thinking of going there today but we were told that the place is very far and that uh, because we had some other things we we're doing you guys must have seen so many videos we've been making but we'll try to see whether we can make that call tomorrow and visit that place because you cannot keep starting projects and you don't finish it is it is sad to see that we have the capacity to produce so much and we're doing little or nothing you know as today i was talking to um, some of the residents the people that we were with today and i told them that just imagine the revenue that tourism generates within the country i'm not talking about people traveling from other countries into our country okay let's put it this way we've been here now for a couple of days right and the terrain in uh, mambila plateau is not so good the roads are terrible so the most likely thing you use is a bike so we've been hiring bikes and going around like yesterday we paid the bike men ten thousand naira each we had four of them that's forty thousand naira today now we have three of them we're going to pay thirty thousand just imagine the money we're bringing to the community then again we buy food we pay for hotel we the bike men buy foil just think about the chain reaction that is the kind of thing i think this country needs you see if a state decides to make it is a state uh, welcomable or accommodating to people people will come in spite of the fact that we know we were told that gimbu road uh, coming this way is the road is far and all that you know and all the stories you used to hear but guess what we're here and they're telling us nothing the place is peaceful the place is nice <laughs> tell you the truth we've not had any reason to be afraid of all the places we've driven to you guys have seen videos where we go to lonely roads bushy paths everywhere it is amazing how peaceful this state is and i only bet can imagine the money the state is losing by not really helping itself to grow Anyway, if you've been watching my videos, I, or you just stumbled upon my video, my name is Big Wheels. I do videos like this. I travel from state to state. Soon, be, soon it will be country to country, just to show what the countries have or what the places have. And I'm going to keep. I'll try to exhaust as much as I can of this country, Nigeria. The thing about it is that there are some places, you know, okay, for insecurity reasons, you can't go there. I won't go there. But the ones that the place is secure and safe, we're going to go there. I'm going to show you what the place is like and what one can uh, achieve if one goes there. Guys, I'm so glad that I came to Gengu. We still have so many days to spend here. My friend Dave, David Unkwa uh, came with me on this trip and um, he'll be living in a couple of days. I'll still be here because I want to really comb a lot of things. I want to show the lives of the people I want to show the culture, a lot of things I do on the show. Today has been a good one. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Like I say, if this is the first time you're seeing my face or you're hearing my voice and you like this kind of content, please subscribe. It would be nice to have you as part of my uh, family on YouTube. And if you want to support this kind of travel that I do, I have a Patreon page where you can go support me. You can also do the YouTube um, uh, join you can join the youtube where you can support me there the link is just beside the subscribe button then if you want to buy me a coffee there's a link is also in the description hit that and buy me a coffee thank you for watching my videos i really really appreciate you guys because it's the watch that you guys watch that gets us keep going and guess what this year i want to hit a hundred thousand subscribers the only way i can do that is if you guys subscribe to this channel that's the only way please guys subscribe to this channel and then please also like my videos please share it if you can to your friends and family so that people can also experience this beautiful place that all these places that i'm visiting it might just encourage you guys to come too if you want to come all right thank you for watching see you guys in the very next video ciao